Um, uh, I'm recording it now. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, <laughs> so, hello. <laughs> after all that uh, technical difficulty. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks for, um, for giving this talk, um, for taking the time. Thank you, both of you. So, you know, there is my laptop which is connected and I need to be able to share my, my screen from the laptop. Uh, so I made you the co-host. You should be able to. No, no, no. But, but there is, there is, there are. I, I am connected in two in two ways with my computer and with my laptop. Okay. And the laptop is not allowed to 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 share the the screen. Um. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I understand. Okay. So. Okay, so I just uh, I just uh, made your other account also co-host. Okay, great. You wanna stop it? It works. Okay, um, you know, so uh, welcome everybody. Um, I guess we'll wait just one more minute and uh, and then we'll get started. Okay, uh, well, I guess it's time to get started. So um, we're happy to have Andre Navas uh, talk about, um, well, maybe you should tell, tell us uh, diffeomorphisms. That's all that I, I remember. Uh, okay. Okay, thanks. So thank you to all of you. Uh, hello, everybody. I see many people there. Steve, but he disappeared. Anyway, so uh, I will share my, uh, my my screen. I did not go for coffee. I am still here. Look, uh, coffee, mathematics. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. And now I will need to. Okay, so I have some slides about my talk here, and hopefully you you are looking. Yeah, I think it's it's okay. And what I will present is uh, actually a question, mostly than a, a result, but because 
you will see it's a very, very modest result. But I think that the, the question is very interesting. And uh, well, this is the question. So uh, I start with a, with a diffeomorphism. So, so let, let me remind the, the, the general framework. I don't think it's really necessary to, to go into the details of this definition because it's a classical definition since the work of Gromov. So uh, I will consider distorted uh, elements in groups. And by a distorted element here, I mean that I have a group G, which is not necessarily a finitely generated group. Actually, this is, this is the, the, the case here. And uh, an element in G, in my group G, is distorted if I can find finitely many elements in G, such that the, the element F belongs to the group generated by them, so to, to, to this group here. And the length with respect to this system of generators of the powers of N grows uh, in a sublinear way which means that the length of f to the power n divided by n goes to zero as n goes to infinite. And there are many, many examples of these kind of things and several applications. And uh, for instance, there is a, a very important application by, by Franks and Handel for diffeomorphisms of uh, two-dimensional manifolds. And, uh, and, and, and one of the, of the, of the of the classical ways to use this is, for instance, if you have a, a, a quasi-morphism in your group G and you have a distorted element, then the, 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 the image of this uh, element under this quasi-morphism has to be trivial. And if this quasi-morphism is, is actually a homomorphism and the group is simple, then the, the homomorphism is trivial. This is the classical way to apply this uh, this issue, but actually my, my, my inspiration is different. So here is the question, which by the way, it is, it is not at all my question, this is a natural question, so I asked many people. Um, for instance, Catherine Mann told me that she, she already thought about this, but it seems to be a, a difficult question, and it is a natural, a very natural one. So you start, you start with a compact manifold, M, and I, will, I, and I will consider two parameters, R and S, which are going to be the differentiability classes for the group of uh, diffeomorphisms. And what I am looking for is a diffeomorphism, which is of class CR, which is the larger class of differentiability here, which is distorted in the group of uh, CS diffeomorphisms, which is a larger group, but which is undistorted in the group of CR diffeomorphisms, which is a smaller group. Okay? And this is the question. So this is a very simple one. It seems to be rather technical, or it seems to be also very, very uh, 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 difficult to handle. Actually, it is, and I will, and I will try to convince you uh, why. Uh, it doesn't seem to be to be to be that simple. Although uh, I think that the answer should be uh, yes, uh, uh, this kind of diffeomorphism should should exist. And this is another source of inspiration for for this question. is a is a classical theorem by Philip Kiedicks from the eighties, who proved that if you take the group of diffeomorphism of a manifold, a compact manifold at least then this group actually characterizes the manifold. So the statement is, is there, if you, if you take two manifolds, M1 and M2, and if you have an isomorphism here, which is an abstract isomorphism between the group of diffeomorphisms, actually the two manifolds are the same. The two uh, parameters R1 and R2 are the same, so the differentiability classes are the same. And this abstract conjugacy actually comes from, uh, from uh, this, this abstract isomorphism actually comes from a conjugacy, okay? So it's a kind of uh, reconstruction theorem. And uh, uh, it's a very nice theorem. It's a, it's, a, it's a very nice, with a very nice proof. So let me just, uh, give a warning here because the theorem as I stated is not totally true. I mean, it is not known whether it is true or not, 
Uh, so we have to assume that R1 is different from the dimension of the manifold plus one. Uh, so, sorry, Andreas, I have a question. What are the quantifiers in the, in the, in the question? Like there exist R or what is... Uh... So, my, so my, my, my goal actually is that uh, for every... So I am given R and S. Okay, I am prescribing these differentiality classes. For instance, take R equal to two and S equal to one. And take a manifold, for instance, the sphere. So my question is whether there exists a C2 diffeomorphism of the sphere, which is undistorted in the group of C2 diffeomorphisms, but distorted in the group of C1 diffeomorphisms. Okay? Okay, thank you. The question is, is, is stated in this level of generality because I think the answer is yes. Okay, so for any manifold, for any differentiality classes uh, larger or equal than one, this should exist, and I will try to explain what is the content of, the, of, of this question. Okay, and this is one of the of the uh, sources of inspiration, the theorem of Filikierics, and this is a theorem that says that, in general, the group of uh, diffeomorphisms characterize the manifold except for these two differentiability classes here, for which the theorem is not known. It is not known whether the theorem is still true or not. And the difficulty for proving in this differentiability class is that in general, groups of diffeomorphisms of any manifold, compact manifold and any differentiability class are simple. This is a very deep theorem by your mother, except for that it is, not know whether it is simple if the differentiability class is equal to the dimension of the manifold plus one. And this is why here I am avoiding these differentiability classes because in the proof you use the simplicity. And simplicity is something which, is, which appears in, in many directions in this, in this stuff. Okay, and, uh, and uh, well, one remark here is that uh, I am, considering only differentiality classes which are at least equal to one, because if you go into groups of homeomorphisms, then it is very easy, well, it is not that easy, but it is, it is known how to, how to build examples, and actually one can construct many, many examples. So there are diffeomorphisms which are distorted in the group of homeomorphisms, but already undistorted in the group of C1 diffeomorphisms, okay? This is the theorem here. Um, well, actually the theorem is, 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 says more than that. This is a theorem by, by Caligari and Friedman, which says, for instance, if you take any homeomorphism of the sphere, then it is distorted in the group of homeomorphism. But if uh, one of these, if you take a homeomorphism with a hyperbolic fixed point, well, this uh, cannot be distorted in the group of diffeomorphisms, of C1 diffeomorphisms, because this uh, hyperbolicity uh, grows exponentially along the iterates of this map. So the logarithm of the, of, the, of the multiplier grows linearly, so the map cannot be distorted. So this is a, a very uh, natural abstraction to C1 distortion. If you have something which is C1 distorted, then it cannot have a hyperbolic fixed point, for instance. But actually, there is this claim here that says that uh, something stronger is true. If you take a C1 diffeomorphism, which is distorted, then the topological entropy has to be zero, okay? And actually, this is, this is still true for, for Lipschitz homeomorphisms. And this show, shows how uh, going into C1 is different from uh, the continuous case. And this is related, actually, this can be very easily proved using this inequality here, which is uh, a classical inequality uh, about topological entropy, which is due to Kushnirenko and Bowen. So Kushnirenko proved it for the measure entropy and Bowen proved it for the topological entropy, but the proof is very, very elementary says that the topological entropy is bounded by the logarithm of the Lipschitz constant of the map times the dimension of the manifold. So here, this is the dimension of the manifold. 
okay? And see, uh, when, when you know this, well, it, it is very easy to show that the topological entropy is zero because if it is non-zero, then the topological entropy of the power grows linearly because the topological entropy of f to the power n is n times the topological entropy of f. But if the map is distorted, then this, this uh, Lipschitz constant grows sub, sub, sub exponentially, so the logarithm grows sublinearly, and so the topological entropy cannot grow linearly along the iterates. Okay? So this is the, essentially the proof of this. So the question deals with uh, diffeomorphism with zero entropy, which, is, uh, which are actually the, the, the most difficult diffeomorphisms to handle. Can I, can I ask a question quick, quick? Sure. When you have distortion, it means that f to the n is a product of other generators, right? Oh, of other generators? What does uh, that mean? Okay, okay, let me, let me go into, into, into here. What's that norm mean? The norm means the norm with respect to this system of generators. So this is the system of generators gamma. Assume that they consider, well, I will so take... Have, yeah. I they will have take the Lipschitz constant. That's the point. Sorry, I, I didn't understand. They have a bounded Lipschitz constant. So the Lipschitz exactly, constant. exactly, exactly, okay. exactly, exactly, exactly. That that that's the proof. Okay, Sorry. thanks. That's the proof. So you have a, a bounded Lipschitz constant for the for the generators. You take the maximal uh, Lipschitz constant, and then you detect. You you can put this here, essentially. Okay, uh, this is the only result that I can prove for this question. Uh, I, I will try to convince you that it is already a non-trivial result. And uh, I think that the ideas in the proof in the construction are interesting by, by themselves. And maybe this is not the good point of view for the general question, but I, this is what I can, I can show you. So my manifold will be the simplest manifold, uh, except for the circle. I, I cannot prove it for the circle and, and I will explain why. And this is also very interesting. At least I cannot prove it using this method. So I will take the closed interval. I will take R equal to two and S equal to one. And the theorem is that there are diffeomorphisms, actually it's infinite diffeomorphism, that are C1 distorted, but C2 undistorted, okay? And hopefully, uh, I think that here you can put even uh, E1 plus alpha, but I, I, I need to, to go into the details of the proof. So there are many, many computations to be made here for changing C1 by C1 plus alpha. Okay, but the point is that I can prove it for C1 distortion and C2 and distortion. Okay, uh, let me give you an example, which is very important for the construction, but because actually this is what uh, appears in the, in the, in the in, in many parts of the of the dynamics. So this is the bounce lag solitaire group. Uh, this is the prototype. This gives a prototype of distorted element, which is the element F. So here I have a presentation of the bounce lag solitaire group generated by two elements F and G, so that the conjugate of F by G is equal to, to the square of F. Okay, and uh, this group naturally acts on the real line by this realization, which are, which correspond to, to affine maps. But actually, you can realize this as, a, a, as two diffeomorphisms of the interval, actually two real analytic diffeomorphisms of the interval, because you can start with your real line, then a, if you wish, these are Mayus transformations that fix a point. And then you open the circle. So you look at the, the action of this Mavius transformation on, on the circle, and you open the circle at the fixed point, and what you get is an interval. So these two maps, F, F and G, are a diffeomorphism of the interval. Okay, this is one way to, 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 to see that. And uh, well, this relation, the, the, the fundamental relation for the presentation, implies this the relation, this is a classical computation. So the conjugate of F by G to the power N is equal to F to the power two to the N. So the length of F to the power two to the N is of the order of N, which is much, much smaller than two to the N. So uh, F is a distorted element. And actually this is somehow a, 
exponentially distorted or, uh, in the sense that the, 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 the norm of f to the power k is of the order of log of k. Okay, and, uh, and this is nice because, uh, well, I have a, a, a mark here. This is because I wanted to explain something. There is an example, actually this is a, a remark by Polterovich and Sodin. It is not stated that way in, in, in their paper, but in another way, by the way, this is a very nice, uh, very short paper on, on distortion and diffeomorphism of the, of, the, of the interval. And the claim is that if you have a non-trivial diffeomorphism of the, of the, of the interval, then uh, uh, it cannot be distorted more than exponentially. Okay, in the sense that f to the power n, it can be of the order of log of n, as in, in the case of the bounds of solitaire, but it cannot be, for instance, of the order of log of log of n, okay? And this is really a, a, an exercise using the mean value theorem. It's a very, it's a very clever argument in the paper of Polterovich and Sodin. Okay, so somehow this is the best one can do at least in class C1. And uh, and uh, in, in the result that I want to show, actually the, the, the most interesting part is the... Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, can you go back to the previous slide? Is the point that G is, I mean, G looks C2 to me, but is it is it's not C2 when you open up the interval, as you said, or something like this? Actually, it is real analytic. Ah. Yes, because you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you take the angle coordinates, you are acting on the circle, and the angle coordinates go from 0 to 2 pi, and then you open this, you get an interval from 0 to 2 pi, and you get a map. Yeah, but okay, but the point is that this this f is supposed to be undistorted in C two. Ah, this f? No, this f is distorted in C one, in C two. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Then, but this is I not the it, example from the theorem. No, okay. This is the example. This is okay, the example. Well, be, this I, is I the understand. Example. I understand. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is the canonical example of uh, a distorted element, but it is too distorted because it's distorted in any differentiability class, and the example that I want to produce is a, is a modification of this map, okay? I, I understand, thank you. Okay, so the, the most interesting part I think is, I, this is the new part, is to give an abstraction to C2 distortion. Okay, because in class C1 we have this, uh, this abstraction about the, 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 the fixed point that cannot be hyperbolic, the same for the periodic points, and this more, more general uh, abstraction related to topological entropy, it has to be zero. Okay, but what about C2 distortion? So you want to produce something that is C1 distorted, but not C2 distorted. And the idea is try to produce something similar, but for the class C2, okay? So the topological entropy, for instance, is related to Lyapunov exponent, and the, the key idea is try to produce a kind of Lyapunov exponent, but at the level of the second derivative. And there is a very natural way to produce this in, in dimension one. And I, I wonder why nobody talked about this because this is a very natural thing to, 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 to do, is to go back to the classical framework of uh, Danjois, who deals with diffeomorphism with a bounded variation derivative. Okay, this is the, the class of differentiability. Uh, for which Danjois theorem is, uh, is true. So M here will be a one dimensional manifold. It can be the circle or the interval. And uh, well, it, if, you, if you impose the condition that the derivative has bounded variation, this is the same as saying that the logarithm of the derivative have bounded variation. And it's better to, to, to look at the logarithm of the derivative because of this inequality here, which says that the variation of the logarithm of the derivative is sublinear, okay? which is just the, an application of the mean value theorem. Uh, no, the chain rule actually. 
is just the chain rule plus the uh, triangle inequality. And whenever you have this, and this is why I wonder why nobody talked about doing this, but actually well, this kind of things happen. It is very natural. This is the kind of thing that you do when you have a, say, a, a quasimorphism or something like this is to, is to stabilize the, the thing here, the variation. So I will consider the variation that the logarithm of the derivative of f to the power n, and I will divide it by n. And this is going to converge because of the sublinear in, sub additive inequality here. And there is a classical lemma by Fekete that says that this converts. And the limit, I will call it the asymptotic variation of the, of, the, of the map, okay? So I have two papers where I call it the asymptotic distortion. And I think this is not the, the right name because uh, now it is related to distorted diffeomorphisms. And, okay. But I prefer to, to call it now the asymptotic variation. Okay, um, here I have a, 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 a claim to, 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 to state, which is very, very uh, natural. If you have positive asymptotic variation, then the map cannot be distorted. Okay, this is obvious. This is because of the inequality uh, of uh, subadditivity for the variation of the logarithm of the derivative. Okay, uh, this is the abstraction. So I will try to look for something for which there is no periodic point at all, there is no topological entropy, but the variation, the asymptotic variation of the, of the map, uh, I will try to force it to be positive. And this way I will be maybe able to produce something which is distorted in class C1. It will not, it will not be distorted in class C2 because the, Asymptotic variation is positive, okay? But this is the key ingredient for the proof. Actually, the, 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 the interesting part of the, of the proof is proving, uh, is detecting uh, diffeomorphisms for which I know uh, a priori that they are undistorted in class C2 in, in this, because of the, of the asymptotic uh, variation of the, of the logarithm of the derivative. Okay, uh, well, there is one remark is that if you have a, a periodic a hyperbolic fixed point, the, the asymptotic variation is positive. This is, this, is, uh, this is true because if you have a, a one dimensional map, there must be a point where the derivative is equal to one because of the mean value theorem. And there is another point at which the derivative is growing exponentially. So the logarithm is growing linearly. So the variation has to be, uh, has to grow linearly, and so the asymptotic variation has to be positive. Okay, so this is, uh, so the, the, the asymptotic variation also detects uh, uh, hyperbolic fixed points. But for instance, in the case where there is no fixed point at all, for instance, take a C2 diffeomorphism of the circle with the rational rotation number. Well, it is already a non-trivial theorem, the fact that the, Asymptotic variation of this diffeomorphism is zero, okay? So the, the, the variation of f to the power n, logarithm of the derivative of f to the power n divided by n goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And, and I will try to convince you in, uh, in a couple of minutes why this is non-trivial. And the reason is that uh, this is not a consequence of the Danjoa theorem or, or uh, things like that, because this is false in the differentiality class of the Danjoa theorem. This is false for diffeomorphisms of class C1 plus bounded variation. And the right setting, so this is false here, and the right setting actually for this theorem is uh, to place ourselves in the group of C1 plus AC. AC stands here for derivative with, with abs diffeomorphism with absolutely continuous derivative. So with derivative which are uh, integrable, which have uh, an integrable second derivative, if you wish, for the diffeomorphism. 
uh, and this is very, very, this seems to be very technical, but actually this is very interesting because this is related to a, to a, a classical example by John Mather. And again, we come back to the, to the simplicity. So Mather made in the 70s the following uh, uh, observation, which is really very, very clever, is that the group of C1 plus bounded variation diffeomorphisms of the circle is not simple. Okay, and actually he was able to produce a, a homomorphism from this group into the into the reals, which is non-trivial. And uh, the point is, is that this homomorphism is trivial when you uh, deal with uh, diffeomorphisms with absolutely continuous derivatives. So this mother homomorphism leaves only on very irregular diffeomorphisms. So for diffeomorphisms that are have uh, bounded variation but uh, don't have uh, absolutely continuous derivative. Okay, and actually there is a close relation between the fact that uh, uh, this this fat here and the mother homomorphism here. Okay, and uh, but anyway, if if you go beyond these differentiality issues, so you go to C two or actually into C infinite, the variation, the asymptotic variation of the diffeomorphism of the circle is zero. And there is a nice complement here. There is a theorem by Arthur Avila. This was a question uh, raised by John Franks actually more than 10 years ago. If you take a rotation, a, 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 an Euclidean rotation of the circle with the rational rotation number, then this rotation is distorted in the group of C infinite diffeomorphism of the circle. And actually it is very distorted. So Arthur is able to prove that uh, if you take any growing sequence, then you can manage in order that the distortion is grows faster than this sequence. So it's arbitrarily distorted in the group of C infinite diffeomorphisms. Okay, uh, which is different from the case of the interval because as I explained it, for the case of the interval, the most you can be is exponentially distorted. But here, because of the recurrence of the, of the, of the, of the map, uh, you can get any distortion. And actually you can complement this theorem saying that if you take F, any F, which is C2, and uh, irrational rotation number. Then one can show at least that this is C1 distorted, just using the, 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 the idea of Arthur plus some theorem by, by Michel Hermann. But I don't know whether it is C2 distorted or C2 undistorted. I would like to say it is always C2 distorted. It is not clear anyway. But what I, what I cannot do is to prove uh, C2 and distortion because the only tool that I have to prove non-distortion is the asymptotic variation. And the theorem says here that the asymptotic variation vanishes. So I have nothing to do with this uh, asymptotic variation uh, for the case of the circle. And this is why I only consider the case of the, of the interval. Okay, so I will uh, move to the case of the interval, and I think this is the key result of this. Uh, yes, yes. So this is the case uh, result of this strategy. So you take a uh, different of, of the interval. So this is very boring from the point of view of, of dynamics. So if you take a map of the interval, so I will assume that there is no fixed point in the interior. Otherwise, you can say if there is a fixed point and there is an, an interval to the left and to the right and you have uh, two different morphisms and then you cut your diffeomorphism into into many pieces and you look at each of the pieces so so i will consider this this hypothesis so i will consider diffeomorphism with no fixed point in the interior and i will also assume that the fixed point that the the end points are parabolic fixed point so there is no hyperbolicity at all so and, and again, this is from the topological point of view, this is very boring. So if you take a point, it moves to the right and every point moves to the right, or it moves to the left and every point moves to the left. 
But if you go into the uh, second derivative, well, there is this natural question here whether or not the variation of the, the asymptotic variation of the map vanishes, as for the case of the circle, for instance. Uh, it turns out that it doesn't vanish. There are many examples for which it doesn't vanish. Actually, for a generic diffeomorphism in this space with uh, these two conditions here, uh, it doesn't vanish. And uh, here there is a, a, a theorem that, that relates this to, a, to another uh, tool in this, in this stuff. So there is an equivalence between these four conditions and the, the key point is the equivalence between one and four. Because the equivalence between one, two, and three also holds for the case of the circle, except for the, that for the case of the circle, we know that the asymptotic variation is zero. So one is, is true. But here it is not necessarily true. So the conditions are the following. So the asymptotic variation uh, vanishes. This is one. The second is that there is a sequence of conjugates of my map that converts to the identity in a corresponding topology, in the C1 plus bounded variation topology. In the case of the circle, it, it will be there is a sequence of conjugates that converts to the identity, not to the identity, but to the corresponding rotation. Okay. And the third one is, uh, I like very much this because you, what the, the strategy in, in this is trying to uh, use the, trying to, to transform this problem into a problem of cocycle in, in a suitable Banach space. So the cocycle here is the logarithm of the derivative and the Banach space naturally is L1. And, uh, and uh, well, the equivalence here in three is for the case of absolute continuous diffeomorphisms difference with absolute continuous derivative. And um, well, the conditions one and two are equivalent to that. This cocycle can be approached in L1 by this sequence of functions, which are co-boundaries with this L1 action here, okay? And, uh, and it is not very hard to see that two and three are equivalent because if you take in two, if you take the derivative and the log of the derivative, what you get is exactly three, okay? And you can go up and back uh, between these two conditions. And the, the, the new issue here that doesn't appear for the case of the, of the circle is four. And the condition four is that F is the time one map of a C1 vector field defined on the closed interval. And this is very important. The fact that, that I consider the closing interval. So this was an issue that was uh, studied a lot by your mother again in the 70s. And one, another way to say this is that mother invariant, which is not the mother homomorphism, by the way. This is another thing. This is mother invariant is trivial. And I will try, I, I will try to explain what is mother invariant. So it turns out that if you have a diffeomorphism of, of the interval, which is close from one side, Then uh, F is the time one map of a vector field defined on, on this interval, which is closed on one side and open in, in the other side. And if you have a, a, now a diffeomorphism of, of the interval, which is closed, well, you can use the same result, but on, 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 on the other side, then F is the time one map of another vector field. And uh, it turns out that in general, these two vector fields are different. They do not glue together. And there is a default uh, for the failure of these vector fields. And this default is mother invariant, okay? And mother invariant is, uh, okay, I will, I will try to, to I, I will not give the definition because it, it goes into a lot of the technicalities, but I will try to express the, the key idea. This is how mother used to think about his invariant. So I have here F, and I, I know that there is some vector field defined here, and then I push it to go into the other endpoint, but I lose differentiality uh, at the other point. And I have another vector field here, and I have to compare them. And actually, uh, to compare them, I, I only need to compare them on a, what I call a fundamental domain. So an interval of the form x, f of x. Okay? And uh, if you go into the, 
identifications of everything, what you get this com, com, uh, there is a comparison map which is actually a diffeomorphism of the circle. So matter invariant is a diffeomorphism of the circle which is associated to any diffeomorphism of the interval with no fixed point in the interior. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, the fact that it is non-trivial um, is equivalent to that the asymptotic variation of the of the diffeomorphism of the of the interval, the original diffeomorphism f is uh, is positive. Okay, and well, uh, this is the equivalence between one and four. This is a theorem that uh, this is a very long paper that we put on the archive some weeks ago with Elena Inard. Uh, there is this identification with some applications. And uh, once you have this, because of the fact that matter invariance is well understood, I mean, there is a, there is a chapter in the, in the thesis of, of your course, that, uh, which is dedicated to, to matter invariant, uh, that we can, we can go into, into the construction for, for this distorted element. Okay, and here is the, the strategy. So, uh, uh, now you, you start with, a, with an F for which the variation, the synthetic variation is, is vanishes. For instance, an element in the, uh, the element F of the bounds like solitaire group, okay? The problem is that this f is distorted in, in, in any differentiability class because the vanishing of the of the of the asymptotic distortion. But now I will consider a, a kind of uh, again um, fundamental domain for the action of f, and here I will put a diffeomorphism h. So h is acting on this interval and only on this interval. Okay, and I will consider the composition between F and H. This is F hat. Okay, and because of the, of the mother invariant and all this stuff that I'm trying to explain, we know that the mother invariant of this F hat is non-trivial. And the reason again is that if you take F hat, well, F hat is equal to F close to zero and close to one. So the vector fields associated to F hat coincide with the vector field associated to F. But when you do the push forward and the push backward, you get a problem in this interval here. And this problem is because of the presence of H. And actually in some way, H is the mother invariant of the diffeomorphism F hat. H in, in, in circle coordinates, when you identify X with F of X. Okay, so this F hat has non-trivial matter invariant, and because of the theorem with uh, Elena Inard, uh, the asymptotic distortion, the asymptotic variation of this F hat is positive, and therefore this F hat uh, cannot be distorted in the group of C1 plus bounded variation diffeomorphism of the interval. Um, of course, this implies that it cannot be distorted in the group of C2 diffeomorphism of the interval. So any diffeomorphism this way, constructed this way as F hat, you start with something which is, which comes from a vector field and you do a perturbation on a single fundamental domain, any diffeomorphism like this will have positive asymptotic variation and hence it will be undistorted in the group of C2 diffeomorphism of the interval. Okay, so this is the key point, how to detect a very large family of diffeomorphisms for which we know that they are undistorted in the group of C2 diffeomorphisms. And uh, uh, I think I am going too fast maybe because I, this is my last slide. So now uh, the, the, the last step is well, to, to, to perform this construction to get this F hat and to force it some way uh, to, to prove it that it's C1 distorted, which means that 
I have to play a lot with the uh, maps defined on, 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 on pieces of the interval, actually infinitely many pieces, and try to play with them and to make uh, the powers of F hat uh, to appear by playing with these diffeomorphisms. So th here there are very, very uh, well-known techniques to do this. And the point is that uh, these techniques work very well in the continuous category, because if you glue together infinitely many homeomorphisms, uh, there is no issue with the continuity at the end. But here what we have to do is to, to do some gluing in the C1 category. And uh, well, I will not go into the details because there are many computations in this part of the of the proof. But believe me, that there are many uh, many uh, techniques to do this. In general, one knows that the only abstraction to do this is that is the the the, the presence of uh, hyperbolic fixed points. But in this case, there is no fixed point at all, hyperbolic fixed point at all. So one can do this, one can manage, and this is, becomes technical. There is only one, one key ingredient in the proof that I want to, that I want to, to, to stress, which goes back to the thesis of Nancy Koppel. But actually, this is, this is a kind of generalization of the lemma of Nancy Koppel that I think is very well known to people in Felician theory. I think that the Steve should know it very well. But it's hard to me to give a precise reference for it. So I found it in a paper of uh, Sueli Druk and Firmo. And, uh, but anyway, this is, this is the, 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 the statement. So as I claim it, I need some technique to glue together uh, infinitely many diffeomorphisms. So this is the general uh, framework. I have a, a map F, capital F here which I will suppose that it is of class C2, okay? And again, there is no fixed point in the interior and so on. And, uh, and here it, uh, I have uh, some interval I, which is the fundamental domain for the action of capital F. And I have infinitely many diffeomorphisms defined on, the, on this interval I. So this is a sequence of diffeomorphisms defined here. And I, will, I want to push them to the image of the fundamental domain under uh, capital F. So, uh, well, I will suppose that these maps are tangent to the identity at the endpoints. And uh, pushing them means that I want to consider this map G defined from the whole interval into itself, such that G defined on the image of I is the conjugate of G N. So essentially the picture should be like this. So, I have here the, the interval i, and here I have the map gn. I have infinitely many maps, but the point is that the action of g here is just the conjugate of gn by f to the power n. And this is the formula here, okay? g restricted to this interval, which is this interval, is the conjugate under f to the power n of gn, which is defined on the interval i. And this way, I get a map defined on the whole interval. And the problem is that that may arise is that this map is not differentially that differentiable at the end points. But the lemma of uh, this generalized version of Koppel's lemma solves the problem and says that the map g that you get will be of class C1, if and only if this sequence of diffeomorphisms Gn goes to the identity in the C1 topology as n goes to infinite. So if you, if the Gn go uh, approach the, the identity, then when you perform this, there is no uh, differentiability issue at the endpoints. And using this lemma many, many times um, some, tricks in the, in the construction, uh, we are able to, to put together uh, many copies of bounds like solitary groups, actually not bounds like solitary group, but subgroups of the fine group with a little and little hyperbolicity. So, so the conjugate of F is not going to be F to the square, but the conjugate of F will be F to the power 
one plus something very, very small, okay? And uh, this way, uh, one can produce many, many groups of C1 diffeomorphisms and playing a little bit, you get that this uh, hat, F hat here appear as distorted elements in a natural way, and this closes this part of the problem. But again, this is the technical part. This is not very surprising for people in, especially in solution theory, because these kind of uh, techniques are standard for building C1 foliations and so on. This comes from the, from the, from the classical example of, of Danjua, if you wish. The, the new part here is the introduction, and I will come back to this slide here. Uh, because I think this is the, the, the interesting part, this is the new issue, is to look at the asymptotic variation of the map in order to uh, ensure a priori that the map is not uh, C2 distorted. And I wonder whether something similar could be made, not similar, but in a spirit, could be, could be done in, a, in any dimension and for any manifold. But I don't know, you see, uh, I, I, can, I can manage it. To, to, to make it work only for the case of the interval. Already for the case of the, inter, the circle, I don't know what is the answer, but uh, I think that using some issues from John Dean's theory or things like that, uh, one should uh, maybe directly approach the problem without introducing any kind of invariant, just doing tricky computations and, and so on. But, uh, Again, I think that the answer to, to my original question is, is, is true always, but I, I don't see how to approach it in, in full generality. Okay, thank you. So thanks. Um, um, so thanks for the, for the uh, uh, very nice talk. Um, are there questions? I think at the end you said that you don't what I mean it's really one dimensional construction yeah. but you pro, you know just multiply it by a circle to make it two dimensions does that fail the, the lemma of Koppel no I mean the uh, these examples with bounded variation if you just do a product with the identity what is it ah. what fails a stupid what question fails? Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, what fails? Well, there is no mother invariant here, but what fails is that uh, uh, the theorem is true for the case of irrational rotation number. Maybe if you multiply by h, you change the rotation number. Or, okay. And you get uh, something of a rational rotation number already. So, uh, I mean, you don't know it's undistorted or. You I don't know, but the point is that the theorem says that the asymptotic variation of f and f hat for the case of the circle, they, they, they vanish. So I cannot use the asymptotic distortion for fooling something in, in this context. Okay, here the, the, the point is that there is this mother invariant and uh, this is this is the key the key issue in the in the full construction is the presence of the mother invariant for the case of the interval. Then you wouldn't get that for say torus two torus. Or, yeah. So there, there there is a generalization of the mother invariant. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There is because mother. It's a, it's a funny uh, issue. I I don't know. Maybe you know the story because I think that your mother never published his first paper where he introduced the mother invariant for the case of the interval. There is a preprint that was never published and then he went into a more general construction that works in any dimension, which is weaker than the mother invariant, but which is enough to prove simplicity for the group of diffeomorphisms. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I discovered this uh, last year. So I, I got the, the original paper by, by mother and uh, yeah, you're, you're right. So there is a, a general mother invariant in the dimension, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I am, I think that uh, John Deem's idea should be more natural for this, for this point. So for this question, I, 
uh, I mean, I use the asymptotic variation because I, I, I was working on the asymptotic variation. But if you want to approach the, the, the problem directly, maybe you, you have to go directly into, into the stuff here. So to, to, to look at the growth of sub-manifolds and, and things like that, like, like in John Dean's theory. So perhaps whenever you have a fundamental domain, then you have a, a, mother, uh, a mother invariant. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, the other thing is that, well, you, 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 if you have any manifold, you have an interval, and you, you can glue this example on this interval. Uh, but it doesn't matter that it is not distorted in the group of diffeomorphism of the whole manifold, because this is larger than the group of the diffeomorphism of the interval. So, OK. <laughs> OK. I have I have no answer because <laughs> this is why I wanted to, to to speak about this because I think the the question is is funny I mean it's like uh, these kind of issues who, with the geometry of Banach spaces which are very different and here I only take uh, groups of diffeomorphisms in the spirit of uh, the work of uh, Rosendahl who introduced this uh, kind of geometric group theory in groups that are not locally compact and try to distinguish them okay so so, so i guess you you could uh you could realize the diffeomorphism group of the interval as a subgroup of the diffeomorphism group of the circle yes probably in more than one way and then uh so you can ask whether or not you have an, an a diffeomorphism of the interval which is undistorted as a diffeomorphism of the interval, but it becomes distorted as a diffeomorphism of the circle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. That's a... No, but wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Uh, so a priori, a priori, yes, this is this is a right point. But the point is that the proof goes through the asymptotic variation. Yeah. So if you put the interval in the circle, the asymptotic variation remains the same. Okay. The map. Yeah. So the asymptotic variation is positive, so it cannot be distorted even in the in the in the circle. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, so, but, it, but it is a general question, like, you know, if you have a, a manifold with a sub-manifold, then uh, with a closed sub-manifold, then um, if you have a diffeomorphism of the sub-manifold that's undistorted in the sub-manifold, you know, does it become undistorted in the manifold? or sorry, yes. distorted in the manifold. This is kind of a general question, uh, but I, I, I'm go, kind of going off on tangent, so. Yeah, yeah I know that well, Sebastian is not here in, in, in the audience, but Sebastian Hurtado, he knows a lot of, of this because his strategy for dealing with uh, group homomorphism within diffeomorphism groups goes through distorted elements, so. I should go again into his paper and to look at uh, whether he proves something in this explicitly in this uh, direction. Yeah, I mean, you one question. Could you take the bounce off solitaire example and embed that into something higher dimension? And then in the other dimension, the other variable, you get distortion because it's like you no know, potent, you know, something collapses. Yeah. Uh, I don't know any example like that, but just. So, but, so when you have something which realizes on the interval, then it realizes on, on any manifold immediately. Because you can, th there is this trick, which is a, a stupid trick, but anyway, you have something acting on the, on the interval. And, and the first thing is that there is this uh, a conjugacy that kills all the derivatives at the endpoints. This is the, yeah, 
this is the, the you conjugate by e to the by the by the function of uh, Euler e to the minus one over x to the square, and you kill every derivative. So you get something which is infinite tangent to the identity, and uh, doing this, you get something that you can glue. So you get a, 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 a circle in two dimensions, for instance, which is a, a union of copies of the interval. And on each interval, you put this group action and you extend this diffeomorphism as being the identity outside and you get a diffeomorphism on, on a manifold. And this can be done for any group of diffeomorphisms. So if you have a group acting on the interval, it acts on any manifold immediately fixing this, this disk. So bounds action group embeds in any group of diffeomorphisms, and so you have distortion, uh, distorted elements in any group of diffeomorphisms, okay? The point is, uh, uh, the, well, another point is whether you can do, so all these questions deal with the uh, uh, differentiabilities which are finite or infinite, Another thing is think about the reanalytic case and it seems to be very hard. The reanalytic case is completely hard. So, uh, okay, so, so are there any um, uh, further questions? You, you can always unmute yourself and just ask. Yeah. Actually, I, I do have a small question. Maybe I, I misunderstood what you what you said, Andres, uh, when you were discussing uh, these results by Avila and also by uh, was it Poltervich and Sodin. So you said that how can a, a something be more than exponentially distorted? So it's how. Really because the, the, in a, in a in a in a ball in a finite integrated group there are only exponentially many elements. So so did I? What did what did you say about? So so cannot be exponentially more than exponentially distorted means that, for instance, well, for the case of the bound like solitaire, we had this estimate that f to the power n is of the order of log of n. Yes. Okay. But what I claim is that for a diffeomorphism of the interval, you cannot have this, for instance, log of log of n. This is impossible for any finite system of generators. This is impossible. But this is this is true for f in any any finitely generated group. In any finitely generated group. Any. But for the case of the interval. Okay. The, the, uh, well, uh, you know, what I had in mind is that in any finitely generated group, in the, the the number of elements of length less than n is is less than exponential of n. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 this is distortion. So you are, you are not looking at the growth function. You are you are looking at whether f to the power n can be written as a product of much smaller uh, of a number of uh, of elements of generator which is much smaller than n. Yes, yes, but this, this, uh, so, well, the number of, of, of elements that can be written as, as a product of less than log log n elements in a finitely generated group is, is some power of log n. Yeah. And so th there cannot be n different elements in a, in a, si in a set of size a power of log n. Uh, no, but, but uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, if you have an if you have a map and you raise it like f to the two to the n, not f to the n, you're asking, could that be some linear combination? And the ball argument, I'm not sure I see. You know, some weird collapsing could happen. Okay, 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 okay. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. So it is not that f to the power n grows this way, but it grows this way along an an infinite subsequence. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's that makes uh, 
everything. And that, that's what Avila produces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, well, I guess, uh, you know, we should uh, thank uh, Andres again so, uh, for, for a great talk. Um, we'll be putting this, uh, so this has all been recorded and, and the recording will go on YouTube. And next week we have another talk scheduled, but I don't remember who, so we'll, uh, we'll send you an email. <laughs> uh, Okay. Thank Great. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great. Thanks, Andres. Ciao.